Hi everyone, this video is the solution for example 4 on the topic of beam deflection. What's interesting about this problem, it is a simply supported beam which we didn't solve yet and also it has a concentrated moment applied at 2 meters from the first support. So same as before, we want first to define our axis left to right and then our main idea is to find the moment equation with respect to z. To find this moment equation, it is very important to find the vertical reaction at A, so then we can start writing our moment equation. To do that, we first need to use the sum of moments at B, so here at this green dot, to help us calculate that reaction at VA. So what we know is that VA times 5, and let's assume clockwise is positive in this case, so plus 90, since 90 is also clockwise, needs to be equal to zero. So from that, we can get that VA is going to be equal to minus 18 kilonewtons, which means VA is actually pointing downward on the left support. So we can now replace this VA with a downwards force of 80. So we're now in a situation to start calculating our moment equation. And let's first consider this red dot here at a distance of Z. We can say that the load of 18 is going to cause tension on the top, so it's going to cause a sad beam, so the moment will be equal to minus 18z. But now, if we consider the moment equation, let's say, in this other red dot, let's say here, after the moment of 90, the moment equation would be minus 18z plus 90, since 90 will cause tension on the bottom, so it will cause a happy beam on the right side. So now we have two equations for the same moment, which means we need to use the Macaulay method to consider both of these equations at the same time in a single expression. This is done by using minus 18z, which is common in the two, but then to the 90, add the term z minus two. And again, what we're trying to do here is to make sure the 90 only works when z is greater than two meters. Now, the final detail here is that z minus 2 is a linear function. So to make it a constant function, we're going to put to the power of 0. Another way to understand this power of 0 is to consider that the 90 is already a moment. So when we put z to the power of 0, we're not changing the nature of the 90, which makes sense since we're trying to calculate a moment equation. So the units here are kilonewton meter, while the units here are also kilonewton meter. The 18z, by the way, this will be kilonewton, and then the z will be meter. So all these units uh, make sense in this problem. So now that we have our moment equation, our first step is to get our curvatures. So y double dash of z being minus m divided by bi. So what we get in this case is plus 18z minus 90z minus 2 to the power of zero. And again, all of this times one over EI. So now we can get our rotation, y dash of z, that will be the integral of the curvatures, dz, and that will be equal to one over EI times, and now 18z will become nine z squared, and then the minus 90z minus two will become still minus 90, but now z minus 2 to the power of 1, or if you prefer, you can remove the power of 1. And then what's missing here is the plus c. Okay, so now we can write our final equation of deflection, which is equal to the integral of rotation, dz, and that is 1 over ei times, and now this will become 3z cubed, and this will become minus 45 z minus 2 to the power of 2 plus cz plus d. So, so far so good. We got our equation of deflection and now what we need to do is find the two uh, constants of integration by using the boundary conditions. And this is another thing that is different in this problem because in the cantilever we were considering a single point that had the displacement and the rotation to be equal to zero. 
But in a simply supported beam, we have a support at A and a support at B. And both of these supports allow the rotations to happen, but they stop the displacement. So what we know in this particular problem about the boundary conditions is that this point here at A needs to have a displacement equal to zero, and the same here at B needs to have a displacement equal to zero. So we can write that in our boundary conditions as the displacement when z equals zero must be zero, and we can write the displacement when z equals, and now we can check the span of the beam, which is five meters, so z equals five, also has to be equal to zero. And again, we get two equations to find uh, two constants of integration, c and d. So now let's apply these two equations. So if we take our deflection equation and we replace z with zero, this term will go to zero, this term will go to zero, and this will go to zero. So the only thing we get is d times one over ei. So d over ei is gonna be equal to zero. And therefore we can conclude that d is gonna be zero. Now, if we consider the second equation, when the displacement at z equals 5 must be 0, we can replace z with 5 in the same equation, and we will get 1 over ei, and then in brackets, 3 times 5 cubed minus 45, and this will do times 3 squared plus c times 5, and then plus 0. And that has to be equal to 0. So then we can take in the calculator that 5c minus 30 equals to 0, which means that c is going to be equal to 6. So now we can finalize our displacement equation that will be equal to 1 over ei. And now 3z cubed minus 45z minus 2 squared plus 6z. Okay, so this will be our final uh, solution and final equation. But in this problem in specific, there is the question of determining the vertical deflection at the location where the moment is being applied. So that's where z equals 2 meters. So with this equation now, I can replace z with 2. And then I'll get a solution which should be equal to 1 over ei, 3 times 2 cubed minus 45 and that's zero so we don't have to add it so minus six times two so that we get 12 over ei which means since it's positive this is a downwards uh, displacement so this concludes this exercise thank you for watching and have a nice day